Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapske, and we're back with some more update information about Nicomunda Hive Secundus. This one was actually posted from the Warhammer community page on July 16th of 2024. And I guess we're kind of spoiled for choices when it comes to information about Hive Secundus for Nicomunda. We've gone months without hearing anything from the reveal uh, trailer that was launched a month ago. Now it looks like we have information overlord now. So we're going to be talking about this latest update from the Warhammer community page. It reads, Nickerman Hive Secundus, head into the depths with a complete two-player campaign. The time has come to tool up your finest weapons credits can buy, make sure your lumens are fully charged, petition the most fearsome spire hunter you can find, and descend into the terrifying depths of the Underhells. Nickerman Hive Secundus is available for pre-order on Saturday. It's a campaign in a box. There's a 176 softback rulebook that contains the full Nickerman rules, minus vehicles which can't navigate all the bottomless chasms. Background Hive Secundus, a thrilling two-player campaign which you can plunder the tenebrous depths for Precious data crystals and hunt the deadliest game of all. So that was actually something that I think was quite interesting about this game. I've been seeing a lot of information from the comments section, especially. You guys have been excellent in providing this information. A lot of you guys have been saying that this is actually a two player campaign, kind of like a dungeon crawl, kind of like in the vein of the old Space Hulk games. And it looks like you guys are absolutely right. It looks like it's going to be exactly that, which makes it quite unique. It says, In this unique campaign, the arbitrary takes the role of the infinite hordes of the Malstrain gene stealers who lurk in the twisted realm of the Underhells. The opposing player commands a secundant incursion gang there to explore the ruined depths, fill their boots with data crystals, and escape without dying. This gang is accompanied by a single member of the Imperial House, Esconce, and an Boris hunting rig. They don't care about data, they just want to test themselves against the blighted might of the Maelstrain. Each campaign takes place across six games, separated by cycles. As the Secundan Incursion Gang makes their way down the levels of Hive Secundus. During the Underhell's entry phase, the gang attempts to break into Hive Secundus while the Maelstrain become dimly aware of their presence. After a short downtime phase in which players lick their wounds, juvies and prospects hustle their way into promotions, and data crystals are traded with shady informants for rare archaeo loot, the interlopers enter the exploration phase, forging deeper into the Hive Ruins over the course of two more cycles. So that's what's kind of interesting about this one. It looks like this one's made up of six games, which is actually kind of neat. You got two week, uh, two cycles dedicated to the Underhell's entry phase, downtime, followed by the exploration phase, followed by downtime, and the confrontation phase. It looks like this could be a really short, simple campaign, especially if you just want to do a one-shot, which is kind of nice. It says, after one more downtime phase, the confrontation phase begins, and the gang attempts one last gambit into the deepest, most dangerous region of the Underhells to snatch the most precious loot before a climatic battle in the heart of the Patriarch's domain, and if any of the raiders survive, a rapid exfiltration follows. It's imperative, however, that players do their very best to ensure their fighters stay alive. Secundan incursion gangs have braved a long and dangerous journey across the Ashways and the Secundan Exclusion Zone, so they cannot be reinforced if they take casualties. So that's kind of neat. It looks like uh, if you take casualties really bad, uh, there's no way you can replace your losses, which kind of makes sense, considering you're going to a place that no one really wants to go to. It kind of reminds me of something like at a Silent Hill, the video game, uh, basically where Tell on Earth, and uh, that's kind of a cool little game mechanic there. Kind of like Mordheim as well. This kind of reminds me of like the Nick or Moon version of Mordheim, which is kind of cool. It says, each game is played in a specific territory which has been issued as the stake for a challenge proposed by the winner of the previous game. Each territory confers a number of Malstrain points that the arbitrator can use to bolster their forces. A single Brood Scum fighter costs one Malstrain point and can use 40 credits worth of equipment, while Malstrain Terminites cost the same. The fearsome Malstrain Juicers cost three points each, though they are limited in numbers by each descent. If an incursion gang wins the challenge, they get to claim that territory and reap the rewards in the process. And what's kind of nice about this too, they actually show you uh, some of the territories. One's called Old Agrodome, level 1. This area is once a lush garden of fruit and rare plants. Now it is overgrown and rotting hell. Its floor a tangle of des uh, desiccated roots and leaf litter, creating fertile soil for more esoteric plants. Battle effect. The Malstrain has no modifier on the MP they have ex uh, available to create their forces. Secundant Incursion Gang boon. While the Secundant Incursion Gang controls this territory, they may clear one in recovery box on their gang roster at the end of the post-battle sequence each battle. It looks like another one here called Dark Chambers from the First Descent. A series of chambers descends into the Underhells, each more perilous than the last. Battle effect of Malstrain has plus three Malstrain points available to create their forces. Secundant Incursion Gang bonus. While the Secundant Incursion Gang controls this territory, they're an additional one XP for taking Malstrain Gene Stealers out of action. So that's quite a good. Then we have level 2, Gallery of Sorrow. The walls of these chambers are covered in murals of grandeur of Secundus. People engage in industry or inspired innovation. Battle effect of Malstrain have plus 2 MP available to create their forces. Secundant Incursion Gang bonus. While the Secundant Incursion Gang controls the territory, D3 fighters of their choice gain 1 additional XP and the receive reward step of the post-battle sequence. So that looks kind of cool. 
Then we have Old Battle Site. Long ago, a furious battle between Hybrids and Xenos was fought here. The battle effect the Malstrain has plus four Malstrain points available to create their forces. Sunkunan Incursion Gang Boon. While the Sunkunan Incursion Gang controls this territory, they may perform the Fabricate Weapon and Fabricate War Gear post battle action an additional time each for free. So it looks like there's a new type of game mechanic evolved called a Fabricate Weapon and Fabricate War Gear. So I guess because you can't really go to the trading post to get things anymore because you're kind of like on your own in this no man's land, I guess you got to create your own gear, which is kind of cool. I'm really excited to see exactly what that game mechanic looks like. Then we have the Pits, level 3, a place of magnificent treasures and unfathomable dangers. The Malstrain has plus 5 Malstrain points available to create their forces, and the Secundan Incursion Gang bonus boon. While the Secundan Incursion Gang controls the territory, they add D3 data, uh, three data crystals to their stash, and they receive a reward step of each post-battle sequence. Yeah, the way they talk about these data crystals, it kind of reminds you of Weirdstone Shards from, uh, from Morheim. Call me crazy, but I'm making those connections there. And then lastly, we have Brood Maze. The coiling tunnels seem alive with the madness of the Malstrain Patriarch. The Malstrain has plus five Malstrain points available to create their forces in the Secundan Incursion Gang boon. While the Secundan Incursion Gang controls this territory, they may increase the number of fighters in their starting crew by one. This additional fighter is always chosen by the Secundan Incursion Gang. So these are some really cool territories that got so far for this one-shot campaign, so it's kind of neat. So, continuing on, it says the double-sided paper playing mats featuring a mostly intact hive floor on one side and a ruined shell on the other, plus the doors and barricades, including hive secundus, give you everything you need to play, though you can improve your experience with some great new plastic terrain features. I don't necessarily need the terrain features because I already have uh, Zor Mortalis terrain that we've actually built on our channel. You guys have seen that before. We made them out of styrofoam, as well as cardboard, so I'll be using that to make the walls there. And it says, even more pervasive in the underhills than collapsed floors and ruined bulkheads is the darkness. The falling dome lumen might provide a modicum of illumination in these harrowing depths, but visibility is low. Fighters outside of visibility range are considered hidden and cannot be targeted by range attacks unless they have activated a light or taken a shot. Those with their own photolumens or infrasites can see better in the darkness, but regular fighters may only see barely more than a few feet in front of them. So, photo goggles, boys and girls! Photo goggles will be extremely important. So it looks like we have the Underhive battles pitch black. Underhive battlefields are almost always shrouded in darkness. On a good cycle, the Dome Lumens might be mostly lit up, create, uh, casting weak light throughout the Hive's tunnels and chambers. Just as often, however, these fail, plunging the entire area to darkness. If both players wish to use the pitch black rules, roll on the table below after setting up a battlefield before players choose to plumb areas or deploying any fighters. So it looks like a full night cycle, visibility 3, visibility 6, visibility two, 12, and visibility 24. So that's kind of nice. So it looks like all those photo goggles, if for sites and photolumens are becoming really really important in this campaign and it says this box is the perfect introduction to the rules wrapped up in a tense campaign that forces you to push your luck with limited resources the box includes a vansar gang composed of eight tech hunters two or aspire hunters a karyotid prime who face off against malstrain forces consisting of eight brood scum six malstrain gene sealers and four tyramites uh, the upcoming book of desolation contains more advanced rules for the secundant incursion gangs spire hunter parties malstrain and malstrain cryptic gangs and a thrilling variant of the unhales campaign to which supports multiple gangs so that is actually quite Quite good. I was really looking forward to this. One of the things I was really looking forward to is seeing what these abyssal ferrymen are. They actually mentioned that inside of the uh, book of uh, the desolation from the preview from yesterday. They also talk about like they have like their own ve their own individual vehicles as well. I know that a lot of people were upset that Delac didn't actually get any Ashway support with their own unique vehicle, so I wonder if that's how they're going to do it because I can see House Delac being like members of the abyssal ferrymen, uh, taking people back and forth across the Sakana exclusion zone because you know stealth smuggling. That sounds like something that Delacs would actually be really into so what are you guys thoughts about this so far how do you guys feel about the upcoming hive secundus expansion for necromunda i for one am super excited about it i'm really interested to see exactly what kind of new game mechanics and campaigns that are available out there because i'm a nut that way but go ahead put down your comments down below i love to hear what you guys have to say so that's good for this week, guys as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is invaluable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram as well as blog.com for all these greatest hobby news related to this channel that's good for this week guys i will catch you guys next one peace out and stay classy